Okay, so this is the model that we just uh, looked at in terms of assigning the, the post tensioning to. I just want to look at the attributes tab. Now, this, in this model, we've got these uh, four tendon assignments. So if I just set this post tensioning in case active. And we've got them here. Now, in version 16, if I wanted to change any of those, I would right hand mouse button and edit. And to do all four, I would have to do them independently. But what I can now do in version 17 is I can select all of them and edit them. And here I get a view of all the properties for the, the four attributes. Now here, when it says force, it tells me there's different properties. Now for this model, I might expect to see them all the same. So if I look down here, I can see the numbers. So we've got 1500, 1400, 1500, 1500. So it's likely that I've made a mistake. If I change this one now to 1500 and OK, or apply, you can see my tendon properties up here are all now displayed as 1500. So it's a nice way of being able to edit multiple attributes uh, in a single go. Couldn't do that in the past. OK, I'm just going to open up another model. Uh, this is a, just a, a simple concrete arch model. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to send a, a vehicle load across the structure. And again, I'm just going to use the moving load wizard in here. So I've got this line here. That's going to be the path of the load that we put across the structure. Now, if I look in the attributes tab in the tree view, here I've got a vehicle load. So let's have a look at that. So it's a NATO tank that we're going to send across this structure. So I'm going to basically select the line, go to the bridge menu, moving load. And this is the moving load wizard. Now, the tank is formed from two tracks. So I need to select the vehicle there. I need to select the search area deck. I'm going to start with load case two because load case one is dead load. I'm going to project onto line and I'm going to send the vehicle across my structure in one meter increments. So if I OK this, this will create a series of load cases with the tank being positioned at different places across my structure. So there you can see the, the two tracks basically on my structure. Now, if I open up this and look at the actual loading assignment, you can see it's been given a factor of one here. And if I do the next one, you'll see that has a factor of one. But it might be that I want to put some sort of dynamic load factor on this structure, uh, on, the, on the tank, to represent it sort of bouncing across my structure. And I can do that. Now, here in this spreadsheet, I've got a sort of a representation of, of a dynamic load factor could be. So rather than just being one, I'm varying the load intensity up and down. Now, here, these are the factors. Now, what I can do is if I select a, a number of these, so I'm just going to hold the Shift key down and select 66 of these, because I've just created 66 load cases. If I then do Control-C, the Windows copy command, I get the dancing ants around the selection, and I can go back to Lusas model. If I go to the Attributes tab, this time right hand mouse button on the load that I want to edit the assignments to. I've got the option to edit assignments. And what I'm seeing here is all my assignments and the load factors that have been used. Now here, this row, uh, this comp, uh, these uh, row of data, I can see that I've got the uh, load factors as one. If I just do a control V, a paste command, Essentially, what I've done is edited all those load factors from the spreadsheet that I had. So if I OK that, if I go back to my analysis tab in the tree view and look at the loading again, you'll see that these no longer have a unity value. They have the value that I've pasted in from that spreadsheet. So in the past, I would have done that using a script or I would have to do it manually that would have taken a huge amount of time. 